I've been a long time fan of the Pokemon TCG, going all the way back to the Platinum days, and can say with certainty that the TCG has never been in a stronger place than it is now. With 37 new artists hopping on for the first time this year alone, it's an exciting time to be both a collector and a fan of the franchise at large. While everyone's got their eyes set on the higher value chase cards of the newer sets, there's a veritable feast of outstanding artwork hiding in the bulk that is just as deserving of people's attention. Thus, I've made it my mission here to explore not only the amazing cards that we take for granted, but also the talented artists that help to bring them and the TCG as a whole to life. To this end, I've bought myself a brand new Twilight Masquerade Elite Trainer Box, and we are going to crack it open and see just what hidden gems lie inside. Alright, while I'm cracking that open, I want to briefly touch on the promo Teal Mask Ogre Pond included in the box. Illustrated by longtime TCG contributor Kodama, I absolutely love the way this card portrays the mischievous Ogre Pond as it runs through one of Kitakami's many rice fields. The harsh light of the setting sun pairs beautifully with the glint of the hollow foil to give the whole card this mysterious feel that fits its subject matter perfectly. Bonus points for also being of the Pokemon on the side of the ETB as well, and a great add to my collection nonetheless. Alright, on to our first pack, we've got Shibuzo's Ducklet. Kichiro Ito's Ninetales, Oswaldo Kato's Trevenant, Shimari Tsuchichi's Emalga, Misoto Niso's Sandslash, Nagi Miso's Iron Bundle, Lucian by Hungry Clicker, Orko's Volbeat, Kizaru's Torkoal, and lastly, Monkey Dory by Kodama. I've got to give it to Shibuzo for another outstanding piece with Ducklet. I love their use of color and texture in all of their pieces, but the added chocolate white outline of Ducklet here further accentuates that effect, leading to another home run for the XY era veteran. In our second pack, we've got Yoriyuki Ikigami's Tangela, Sonosuke Sakuma's Koferi, Yu Nishida's Shinx, Suichiro Gunjima's Polchegeist, Carmine by Kentaro, Susumu Maeya's Swana, Mina Nakai's Belly Bolt, we got Boomerang Energy, Ligton's Florgis, and Heatran by Akira Igawa. I think Heatran's always been one of my favorite legendary Pokemon, and Igawa's print easily comes in as one of my favorite depictions of this majestic beast. Coming in with a low angle perspective to add to the formidable nature of this creature, the shot is only made better by the splintering rocks and hot flames that consume the piece really nailing the volcanic nature of this Pokemon in a terrifying way. Igawa's style lends itself nicely to this Pokemon, and once you compare it to their other works, it's easy to see why. She's been working with TCG since the Sun and Moon era, and is an absolute master of creating dynamic action pieces that pop off the card, like Vivid Voltage's Magirna and Paldea of Vault's Paldean Tauros. Her go-to color palette consisting of bright reds, oranges, and pinks are just as iconic and create this hot scorching effect no matter the set piece, such as the blistering sands of Paradox Rift's Aspathra or the harsh city lights of Brilliant Stars' Lipard. She's one of those artists in the TCG that is always an absolute treat to see with every new set and to see whatever she's able to cook up next. The turn here is definitely one of my favorite cards in the entire set, and that is definitely saying a lot. Next, in our third pack, we've got Koki Saito's Timber, Saya Saruda's Spinarak, Whiskers, Hisui and Growlithe, Kadama Hadaitai Yawadakai's Poliwag, Kudama's Morpeko, Carmine again, Toshinao Aoki's Heracross, Newcomer Dancheo's Brute Bonnet, Aspera's Fione, and Alakazam by Masaka Tomi. Going back to Poliwag, it should go without saying, but this card is absolutely beautiful. Kadama Hadaitai Warakai is new to the TCG after debuting with Inkei off of Obsidian Flames, but they're definitely a name worth paying attention to. Their oil painting style and heavy blues and greens come together here to create a really melancholic Poliwag, complete with a charming little reflection in the pond. Outside of Pokemon, their expert use of color and lighting becomes even more apparent, giving their pieces this heaviness to them that I'm excited to hopefully see more of in the future. For our fourth pack, we got Tomokazu Komiya's Venipede, Gapau's Aeron, Tetsu Kayama's Sandshrew, Hayogonosuke's Chansey, another Iron Bundle, another Lucian, Okubo's Darmanitan, 
a reverse hollow of that same Venipede, Mingo's Floet, and Chandelure by Sino Misaki. This Floet card from Mingo is, I mean, absolutely stunning. From the vibrant flower pots in the back to the nice thick outline and white highlight on Floet itself, Mingo really knows how to make their prints pop even on such a tiny canvas. They're a newer artist to the TCG, having debuted last set with Rebska and also providing Slurpuff in this one. Their catalog is small, but I really think we'll see big things from them in the future. They were a second runner-up in the 2022 TCG Illustration Contest, and browsing their Twitter shows their love for bribe and pranks and blues on full display. Definitely a standout amongst this year's freshman class, and one I expect great things from moving forward. In pack number 5, we find Hitoshi Ariga's Frogadier, Orca's Illumize, Tiazero's Applin, Akira Igawa's Nosepass, another Darmanitan, another Carmine, another Swana, Whirlipede by Koroguchi, a Reverse Hollow Aeron, and Hearthflame Mask Ogre Pun EX by Five Band Graphics. I have to say that I've really enjoyed the new wave of EXs, and Ogre Pond here is no exception. The imposing visage of the mask blocks most of the frame as crystal shards shoot off in a blur in all directions. Add on top of that the extra shine from the hollow foil pattern, and you've got yourself a nice shiny addition to the collection. Moving on to our sixth pack, we have Mosho's Chimeco, Jerky's Chimchar, another Whirlipede, Karada So's Crawdont, Kuroi Mori's Leafeon, Hasano's Reverum, Toriyufu's Rillaboom, Tomomi Ozaki's Gruki, a Reverse Hollow Sandslash, and Walking Wake by Kawayu. Of all the evolutions, I think Leafeon is probably my favorite, and Kuromori's rendition is probably my favorite of at least the standard prints. The bright light coming in through the flowers and bathing our subject in its glow, the slightly aged texture, and the scratchy shadows that feel reminiscent of old Final Fantasy artwork are just beautiful. This is Kuroi Mori's second print beyond the beautiful full art Gardevoir EX from Baldean Fates, with more on the way that I hope to be able to show off in future episodes. Looking on their socials, and it's pretty obvious that Final Fantasy comparison wasn't a coincidence, as it's full of pieces with some same scratchy shadows and worn out colors that make their contributions to the DCG stand out so. Just another absolute banger of a rookie artist, that's for sure. On to pack 7, we get Soso's Vulpix, Yukomori's Froki, Satoma's Eevee, Katsumori Sato's Phantom, Another more Peko, Takeshi Nakamura's Conkelder, Okacheke's Diplin, It Reverse a Hollow, more Peko, Gapow's Jinx, and Zapdos by Gosen. You can't possibly have an evolution without an Eevee, and courtesy of Satoma, what an Eevee we get. Their knack for composition comes out again here, with Eevee taking a little breather under an assortment of flowers with a playful grin on its face to remind the world why we love this little booger so much. Just another outstanding print to add to a long line of really cute Eevee prints over the years. Okay, almost at the end here, coming out of our 8th pack, we have Gemi's Sea King, Naoyo Kimura's Sunkern, Kariya's Abra, Nikkeiu's Snow Runt, Another Belly Bolt, Soichiro Gunjima's Snorlax, Lana's Aid by Atushi Furasawa, Hyper Aroma by Toys to Beach, Slugma by Kapow, and another Alakazam. It was so great seeing the Abra Lodge return in full to the TCG after 20 years in 151, and it's amazing to see that it's not a one-off, especially with this amazing piece by Karia. The tall grass in the foreground and low-angle perspective feels like we're sneaking up on this famously fleeting creature to glimpse this brief moment of tranquility. The segmented, scratchy line work and the subtle glow from the sunrise reflecting off Abra's chin make for a surprisingly relaxing final product that is one of the most creative takes on this mod we've seen throughout the entire TCG. 
Finishing us off in our ninth pack, we find Asako Ito's Sandy Gas, Gav's Dreepy, Scav's Feebass, Shinji Kanda's Giraffe Rig, another River Room, another Rillaboom, Handheld Fan by Toist Beach, Taiga Kayama's Helioptile, Akira Komayama's Swirlix, and Hisuian Arcanine by Shiei Nanahara. Similar to Akira Igawa, Shiei Nanahara's got this knack for fiery action pieces as seen in their Hisuian Arcanine. Smoking clouds billow in a ring around the mighty beast, drawing in your attention with the assistance of directional light flashes and soot being kicked up in the moment. A strong light illuminates Arcanine from beneath, bathing its face in shadows and adding to its mystique. Nanahara is a relatively recent addition to the TCG, getting their start in Crown Zenith, but unlike some of the other names I've talked about thus far, you may recognize some of their many full art prints, such as Temporal Forces' Shift Tree, Crown Zenith's Susuin Zoroark V-Star, or the promo Greninja EX. Their style is strongly inspired by classical Japanese art, and it comes across in many of their non-Pokemon pieces as well as seen over on their socials. They're certainly a welcome addition to the TCG, and as always, I just can't wait to see what else they make in the future. Alright, there you have it folks. I hope you enjoyed. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and... Who's there? Hello? anyone out there? What the... What the hell? What? Well, that was weird, but since I guess we've got one more pack, we might as well open it. In it, we've got Shiganori Negashi's Varum, Tezero's Watrol, another Volbeat, Sino Misaki's Goldeen, another Snorlax, another Lana's Aid, another Leafeon, Subotary's Diplin, Mingo Slurpuff, and a full art Dragapult EX by 5 Ban Graphics. Ignoring the fact that Dragapult here is actually kind of meta relevant and thus does fetch a good penny, I feel like a lot of the more standard full arts get ignored these days, and that's kind of a shame. Just like with Hearth Flame Mask Ogre Pond from earlier, the shine of the hollow foil really captures the crystalline feel quite well on this one. I also think Dragapult is one of the best Gen 8 Pokemon, and one of my favorite pseudo-legendaries, so I'm excited to be able to add this one to the binder. Alright, with that, we reached the end of the video, and here's a simple graphic with all the cards that we pulled today. I apologize for the late upload, but I'm hoping to improve my setup going forward and get these out on a more reasonable time frame. If you want to see me cover more sets in the future, like and subscribe. And if you liked any of the artists I featured here today, I'll have links down below to any of their socials that I could find, so you can go follow and support them over there. I hope you enjoyed this little experiment of mine, and until we meet again, remember to stay salty.